Welcome to this workshop presentation. My name is Dilerik. I'm a PhD student from Leox, and I will try to answer the question, is there an history in structural bias? So what is structural bias? Well, if we have an optimization algorithm, it will have different, uh, different operators. And if we give a certain problem to solve for our optimization algorithm, we expect it to find the solution. And if we give it similar types of problems, just with the location of the optimum sw switched, we expect to get similar performance uh, from these different versions of the same problem. However, if our algorithm is somehow biased towards certain parts of the search base, it will be less effective if the optimum is located in a different area. And that would be a, an inherent shortcoming of the algorithm. So in order to find these cases of bias, we need to see the impact of the operators on the final found location without considering how the actual uh, optimization landscape impacted. So we need to remove the factor of the solution landscape from our problem. And the way we can do this is by replacing our problem with a function we call f0, which is just random noise for all points we sample. And then the solution of this function would be uniformly distributed throughout the space. So if we want to find bias in our algorithms, it suffices to look at the solutions found on F0 and see if they are uniformly distributed or not. So if we would have an algorithm that is not structurally biased, its solutions would look something like this. So they would be uniformly distributed in each of the dimensions that we consider. And an algorithm that would be structurally biased would be uh, something like this, for example, where we have a clear bias going on towards the center of the search space and away from the boundaries. And this works well visually. We can easily see this is biased. This is not uniform. However, if we get cases like this, then it becomes a lot more tricky. Does this data look uniform or not? It's a challenging question because judging if something is truly randomly distributed is not something that we humans are good at identifying visually. So we should use some statistical testing procedure. And the statistical test procedure that was proposed for detecting structural bias is the anderson darling test with Benjamin Yucatelli correction to find which dimensions show clear deviation from uniformity. But because this test is done per dimension, one thing that was noticed when running this on data from a lot of different types of algorithms is that it often finds that some dimensions are uh, biased while some others are not. And this is one example of the data from one of these, these algorithms. So we see here with these red crosses, which dimensions are rejected by our statistical test. And the dimensions where there's no cross are the ones that are not rejected. And so we might think that this means that this algorithm is an isotropic. So there's a difference in the way that it handles these different dimensions. But if we look at this a little more closely, then we realize that that's not actually the case. There's no evidence to suggest that any pair of dimensions is not identically distributed. Instead, what is happening here, and we can see this, this visually already, is that there is quite a lot of data missing near the boundaries and quite a lot of clustering going on near the center of the search base. It's not as extreme in the previous case I showed you, but it's still there. So visually, we see that this is a potential shortcoming of the used statistical bias test. So we should look at how we can improve the test to identify the bias that we see visually that is not detected by the testing procedure. 
Another example of where we might suspect anisotropy is in cases like this. Here, if we look at correlations between dimensions, we see that they are relatively high. But our statistical testing procedure does not detect any structural bias on any of these dimensions. And here again, visually, we see this is definitely not something that we would consider to be uniform. So this is another potential deficit of the structural bias test that is being used. So these are a few examples of cases where visually we suspect structural bias, but our test does not confirm it. So we should try to see if we can improve our structural bias detection to identify these cases as well. One way that we can improve these tests is by considering the basic case where we have a bias either towards the center or towards the boundaries of the search space. And we can do that by transforming our samples to look at distance from the closest boundary. And this effectively gives us a uniform sample between zero and a half that we can perform another anderson darling test on. And this allows a lot clearer distinction of common types of structural bias. For example, if we cut off part of our domain that is unreachable, so we take off 10% of, uh, of the domain and we distribute the other points uniformly, then this transformed and darling test is a lot more sensitive than the original test on the original samples. But it's still not perfect, not by a long shot. So it still fails in the majority of cases with the sample sizes that we use. Another way that we can try to improve the structural bias detection is by looking at the clustering of these points. And we can detect this with a spacing test. So if we look at the distance between neighboring points and we look at the distribution of these distances, then we can compare this to the distribution of these uh, of neighboring points from a uniform distribution that we see at the top. And at the bottom, we see the result from this previous uh, figure I showed you where we suspected uh, that there might be clustering going on. And we see that the, the mean and the quantiles are very much different and indeed running a KS test on this shows that this is definitely not the same distribution as this. So again, we have a clear deviation from uniformity that was not detected with the original testing procedure. And a final way that we can try to improve the structural bias detection is by aggregating samples. Because if we have the case that all of our samples are uniform and identically distributed, and independent, then the aggregation should be uniform as well. So we can test the aggregated sample to get a larger sample size and a more robust test. And indeed running this will reject the null hypothesis on all of the cases where we uh, suspected anisotropy because of um, uh, differences between, uh, between dimensions, different numbers of, uh, of rejections and also in quite a lot of the cases where we suspected anisotropy because of uh, correlations between, uh, between dimensions. So overall, detecting structural bias is still, still a very challenging problem. The original statistical test that was proposed is not sensitive enough to some of the common types of, uh, of bias and it seemingly detected an isotropy, which was not actually there if we improve the, the tests uh, even a little bit. So this leads to very obvious future work, namely looking at the dependence of the structural bias test to sample sizes, seeing when are they sensitive enough to detect the bias, and identifying the common types of structural bias that are missed, and creating a toolbox that will implement different testing procedures to identify these different types of structural bias.